28 October 1962. Amphibious Group 3 embarked the 11,000-man 5th Marine Expeditionary Brigade leaving Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, California by sea with two reinforced amphibious squadrons and the amphibious command ship USS El Dorado AGC-11 for the Caribbean during the Cuban Missile Crisis. One week earlier, the entire 189,000-man Marine Corps was put on alert and elements of the 1st and 2nd Marine Divisions were sent to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba to reinforce the defenders of the U.S. Naval Base. Other 2nd Marine Division units and squadrons from five Marine aircraft groups were deployed at Key West, Florida or in Caribbean waters during the Cuban Crisis. Also known as the October Crisis of 1962 in Cuba, the missile scare was a 13-day confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union when U.S. deployments of nuclear missiles in Italy and Turkey were matched by Soviet deployments of nuclear missiles in Cuba. The crisis lasted from 16 to 28 October. The confrontation is widely considered the closest the Cold War came to escalating into full-scale nuclear war. By the time of the crisis, the total number of nuclear weapons in the stockpiles of each country numbered approximately 26,400 for the U.S. and 3,300 for the Soviets. For the United States, around 3,500 with a combined yield of approximately 6,300 megatons would have been used in attacking the Soviet Union. The Soviets had considerably less strategic firepower at their disposal, some 300-320 bombs and warheads, without submarine-based weapons in a position to threaten the U.S. mainland and most of their intercontinental delivery systems based on bombers that would have difficulty penetrating North American air defense systems. However, they had already moved 158 warheads to Cuba. Between 95 and 100 would have been ready for use if the U.S. had invaded Cuba, most of which were short-range. The U.S. and approximately 4,375 nuclear weapons deployed in Europe, most of which were tactical weapons such as nuclear artillery, with around 450 of them for ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and aircraft. The Soviets have more than 550 similar weapons in Europe. The Cuban Missile Crisis was solved in part by a secret agreement by U.S. President John Kennedy and Soviet First Secretary Nikita Khrushchev. The Kennedy-Khrushchev Pact was known only by nine U.S. officials at the time of its creation in October 1963 and was the first time officially acknowledged at a conference in Moscow in January 1989 by Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin and Kennedy speechwriter Theodore Sorensen. In his negotiations with the Soviet ambassador, President Kennedy, President Kennedy informally proposed that the Jupiter missiles in Turkey would be removed within a short time after the crisis was over. Under an operation code named Operation Pot Pie, the removal of the Jupiters from Italy and Turkey began on 1 April and was completed by 24 April. Both Kennedy and Khrushchev took every step to avoid full conflict despite pressures from their respective governments. As a direct result in to the crisis, the U.S. and Soviet Union set up a direct line of communication. The hotline between the Soviets and the United States was a way for the President and Premier to have negotiations should a crisis like this ever happen again. Cuba perceived the outcome as a betrayal by the Soviets and decisions on how to resolve the crisis had been made exclusively by Kennedy and Khrushchev. Castro was especially upset that certain issues of interest to Cuba, such as the status of U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay, were not addressed. That caused Cuban-Soviet relations to deteriorate for years to come. Until next time, stay salty devils, semper fi, and carry on.